ready to sing. Fellowship with the choir as they, as they make their way through the, I don't know, come down, whatever. Welcome there. We're on a ship, Greg, right? We get confused every now and then.
Amen. Thank you so much. You can be seated. And we give God praise for the opportunity God has given us uh, to uh, be back together this morning in the house of the Lord. Uh, I want to ask our ushers to come forward. Uh, we are uh, tonight, or today we are finishing up our Annie Armstrong Easter offering. Uh, and uh, we want to thank you so much for giving. And thank you for the opportunity that we have to, to reach uh, right here in America. Uh, we need People need Jesus. Amen. And uh, we're going to do that while Miss Brooks sings here in just a minute. Uh, I do want to, uh, everyone who is working in Vacation Bible School, if you are working or you are parking during Vacation Bible School, maybe to bring your children in and you're staying uh, around, uh, please pay attention to all of the parking signs so that we can make sure we have you in the right place uh, so that we, we, we have some exits, we'll have entrances. Uh, they'll have all that set up, so uh, be sure and watch uh, for those to make sure you park in the proper place. Uh, but I want to tell you, I have been, uh, of course, uh, uh, you know we have been, uh, I've been in Korea uh, until this past Thursday morning, uh, and uh, I watched, I saw how effective it is for missionaries to be in a land. And what we are doing right here this morning is we are uh, taking an offer for the missionaries that are right here in America, reaching out in our communities where people have never heard about Jesus. You do know we have people that have never heard about Jesus. Amen? Right here in America. And so we have that opportunity to be a blessing uh, and to reach and uh, reach out to our missionaries and to bless them with the offering. And so that's what, that's what we're going to do this morning. And uh, we thank you so much for, for giving what you've already given. And uh, we want to uh, uh, close that offering out. Out this morning that uh, that we want to give uh, to our missionaries and be a blessing to them. But what if you had so how many have somebody that lives in a different part of this country? Would you raise your hand? You got somebody that lives in another state uh, in this country. All right. What if they didn't have any churches and that was the and there was only one person that could reach them and that would be a missionary? Would you want that person? to be funded on the field so that they could reach that one person that you have. That's what it is in doing missions. It is reaching people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because everybody needs Jesus. Amen? How many of you believe everybody needs Jesus? Amen? Amen. Let's pray together. Father, thank you, God, for being so good to us. Thank you for the power and the promises in the Word of God. Lord, I praise you, Father, that you give us your Word. And God, then you tell us to go with that Word, that others may know you, that people may come how to hear your voice. God, that people may know that you are the Savior of the world. God, that they may know that we have sinned and come short of your glory. God, so that we can understand that Jesus is the Savior of the world. And today, Lord, that everybody can know him as Savior and Lord. God, help us as we go forth to get the gospel out, to teach people that Jesus is the Savior, that He can change your life, that He can give you life, and He can be there for you every single place you will ever go in your life, that Jesus is the Lord. And Father, I pray you will bless every missionary on the field that is spreading the gospel, Lord, that is giving people life, that is helping people to know that you are the Savior. God, I pray, Lord, for a fresh anointing upon them this morning. God, you have blessed them, bless that place of service where they are. God, bless them as they give their heart and their life. Bless their family, the sacrifices that they are making on the field. Father, thank you for the opportunity you give us to be part of their lives. Lord, I pray that we, God, but that not only give, the, give, but Lord, we also pray. And God, to know that you are the one who's able to do all things. Lord, thank you for the walls you've torn down. God, thank you for the doors that you have opened right here that we can spread your word. We pray your will be done in Jesus' wonderful and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank God. God is good. Amen. Look at somebody right quick and say, God is good. How many of you believe He's good? Amen. We praise God for His goodness. Thank God for His grace and mercy. Let's worship uh, with uh, Sister Brooke as she sings. Amen. Thank you. 
Amen. How many of you is glad this morning he never gave up on you? Amen. Hallelujah. I praise the Lord uh, this morning for his wonderful uh, promises of his word and thank God for the opportunity he's given us to be able to trust in him. And we just want to give God praise for his blessings this morning because God is so good. Amen. And we give him thanksgiving. Take your Bibles, if you will, and turn uh, to the book of Acts, chapter uh, number 6 this morning. The book of Acts, chapter number 6, uh, as we hear what God has to say uh, to us this morning, and thank you again uh, for being in the house of the Lord, and thank God for the opportunity God has given us every single day uh, to know Him, to worship Him, uh, to know that He uh, is alive and well, and friend, I want to tell you, no matter where you are, my God is able. No matter what you have going on, my God's able. Amen. Uh, he knows and God uh, wants to do a work in and through us uh, for his honor and for his glory this morning. And uh, just thank him and praise him. Uh, and I do want to thank you again for uh, your prayers for us as we uh, traveled uh, over these last uh, nine days uh, in Korea uh, and uh, saw so many uh, great things that were taking place. Uh, the power and the presence of God uh, in, a, uh, in a mighty way. Uh, Every single morning at uh, 5 o'clock, every Christian church uh, in South Korea gathers and prays. Every church, every, uh, it, it was absolutely the, uh, uh, it was breathtaking. Matter of fact, it was breath giving. Uh, and we ask, and it has been asked, the question was, well, is there something going on, something special that is happening? And they would just look like you were, like, really? They said, God gives us 24 hours. Can we not at least give Him one every day? It was like, well, we've been schooled. Where have we been? When I think about the book of Acts, I walked in the book of Acts over these last nine days. I watched things begin to happen and things that were taking place. And it was like, oh, wow. Missionaries. South Korea, the small country of South Korea, sends out more international missionaries than any country in the world. I'm like, how does that happen? This morning, as I was trying to uh, prepare and you try to put all that together, uh, it is almost impossible to put all that together. We're going to do a whole thing on Korea uh, on a uh, Sunday night in, uh, in July and try to bring all that, uh, all those pieces together. But I was thinking about the book of Acts and what is taking place and how God is working and why is that not happening at many places today like it was happening in Jerusalem or happening in the book of Acts, as you watch these believers as they step forward and uh, they actually, they, they quit, uh, they weren't playing church, uh, they weren't going through a religious uh, religious ritual, uh, they were living a life that is brand new. And they're living a life that God has given them. How many of you, God's given you new life? Would you say Amen. And you watch that taking place in the book of Acts. You see them, and it's like uh, when you when you go to the Gospels, you're seeing these little things happen. You're watching people get healed. How uh, you're seeing people? When I say little, I don't mean on a little scale. I mean God does big things. Amen. If you're saved this morning, guess what? God did big things in you. Amen. Uh, but when I, I look at these small uh, little things that are taking place all through the Gospels, it's like wow. Uh, look what happens, and people rejoice. And you uh, watch these as they're change, but when you get into the book of Acts, it is like God flips all the lights on of the whole world and says, look, this is how bright God's people shine. This is how bright God shines through His people to reach around the world. And so you watch that begin to happen in the book of Acts. There is a true transformation that takes place. Now think about that as a believer that happens in our lives. We have transformation transformations in our life, those places where we change, those things change in us. We've looked at the word transformation many times, and it means uh, it is a change of your character. It's a change of who you are. It is a change of things in your life. How many of you have ever set out before to be on the world's greatest diet and gain weight within a year? Those tra that was a transformation that didn't, that went opposite, amen? 
But when you think about transformation, they happen every day. We make choices every day. But when you watch this church, you watch these disciples, there's 12 disciples, one of them we understand had a heart that was not changed. He did not believe in who Jesus is, and he betrayed him, so he is, he is out of the picture. So these 11, you watch them as they follow Jesus with everything they had, but they still were not transformed like they were in the book of Acts. Whenever they allowed the Holy Spirit and they begin to walk in the Holy Ghost and you watch their lives totally change forever. Listen, can I let y'all in on something? The Christian life is not to be a humdrum dead life. You're alive. Look at somebody and say, I'm alive. When you think about how what our life is about, I done kicked a rock over. Sorry about that. When you think about what our life is about, Jesus said, I came to give you life, and I came to give it more abundantly. When I got saved, how many of you know you got saved one day, amen? When I got saved, I was a senior in high school. I thought I had everything going for me. I thought I had all of the life that could be had at that age and doing all the things that I planned on doing and was doing at that time. I thought that was life, but I found out whenever I got saved, I come alive. Did you know this morning the Bible says in the book of Ephesians that we are dead in our trespasses and sins? So whenever I was lost, I was dead. When I got saved, I came alive. How many of you know what a resurrection means? You're alive. Amen? And so as a believer, you watch that taking place in the book of Acts. Jerusalem has become the center of transformation. It has become the place where their lives are totally changed forever. Everything that Jesus is in the lives of these disciples have become a reality in the book of Acts. Everything that he taught them that they should be became real in their life in the book of Acts. It became how they lived Life. Matter of fact, we've watched miracles already taking place. When you come in chapter number 5, uh, the Bible says that uh, they were bringing everybody who was diseased and the very shadow as Peter passed by. Uh, if they could get in the shadow of Peter, uh, they, were being, they were being healed. He's the healer this morning. Church, can I let y'all in on something? Are y'all hot in here? Aren't you glad you're not going to hell? Friend, just focus on Jesus. Praise God, fan and let her rip. Amen? Listen, when you think about being saved, you think about knowing God, and you think about our lives being totally transformed and coming alive to who Jesus is and who Peter, as he walked through that crowd, people in his shadow became healed. How did that happen? It wasn't Peter. It was Jesus that he was following. It was the sun shining upon Peter and the shadow of the Son of God Himself. That people are coming to know Jesus. Church has got to be a miracle place again. We have got to get back to where they were in the book of Acts. Where lives are changed, cities are changed, nations are changed. What is happening? Where is this going? What is supposed to be happening now? I mean, they've experienced Jesus. He resurrected from the dead. Amen? They've experienced in the book of Acts, that very first part of the book of Acts, that thousands of people have come to know Jesus at one time. Now what's supposed to happen? Multitudes have come to know Jesus. Miracles have happened and are happening. There's a lame man that is leaping. There's sick people who have been healed. The prison bars all of a sudden have unlocked. So what now? When you come to Acts chapter number 6, things begin to Change Things begin to happen. Structure begins to take place or to lead them further than they are. They begin to understand that they now, yes, they have in their life a destiny. How many of you know exactly in your life where you're going? All right. All three of you say praise the Lord. You know exactly, you have a destiny, you know exactly what you want in your life and where you're going and where you're headed. But I want to tell you, as you look at the book of Acts, you understand their destiny changed because they all they wanted was to be who Jesus is and Jesus to be glorified and go where Jesus wanted them to go. That transformation takes place when you get saved, amen? 
that place of being old, dead, and undone, and God saves you and forgives you your sin. We know that there's a heaven and we know that there's a hell. How do, what about in between that? How do we allow God to lead us where how we need to be? There is a destiny. You are destined in life how that God has given you. It's, it's good to be saved, amen? And it's good to know that one of these days we're going to heaven. But what about filling in that space in between? What are we going to do how with the here and the now and, and the tomorrow how that is ahead of us? There is. How this is where we are going. This is our destiny. Am I saved how just to be sitting on a pew? Am I saved just to, just to miss the fire of hell? He saves us to serve Him. He saves us to know Him. Oh, and you look in verse uh, number 1 it, with me, if you will, in Acts chapter number 6 and verse uh, number 1. How you understand there's something that is happening where they are. Say in those days, how when the number of the disciples was what? It was what? It did not say it was added. It was what? How many remember whenever you begin to learn multiplication in school? Y'all remember that? Wow, you understood that this gets a whole lot bigger than just the addition. Can I tell you what? How many, pe how many people this morning are in this world? Somebody tell me. Over 7 billion people. How many believers are they in this world? How many people do you think that we need to understand that we're not here just for one or just for two? We are here for multiplication. We are here that the church may multiply, that our communities may multiply, that people, we have so many people around us. We know that right here in Caldwell County, in five miles, any direction you go from the church, there are 35, over 35,000 people. They all need Jesus. Oh, and you watch what is going on in this book, and you see as God begins to work, as these disciples were multiplied, there arose, the Bible said, then there arose a murmuring. Y'all know what a murmuring is, don't you? Used to, years ago, they said you would just pick up, they would, how about the ones they would pick up the phone to give you a prayer request? Then they would, then this one would call somebody else, then this one would call somebody, now they just text it. Tweet it. Facebook it. Y'all know what I mean, don't you? There's a murmuring going on. Y'all know what murmuring is? You know what happens because every time you walk up and them two people are talking, they quit talking, they were talking about you. Y'all know that, right? Ain't that crazy how the devil puts stuff like that in your head, by the way? Murmuring. They begin to stir underneath what all is going on. Do you all not think you would have been excited that your friends and family just got healed in chapter number 5 and the lame man was a-leaping in chapter number 5 and all these people are coming to know Jesus in chapter number 2, chapter number 3, chapter number 4, and chapter number 5? What do y'all think? Y'all don't seem too excited about it right now. When you think about all these, all that God is doing, but there's a underlying current of a murmuring going on. Well, it's just too hot in that church. That's today's murmur, by the way. It's just too cold. Y'all know what? I, there's just those things that Satan just tries to stick you with, where everything is great in your life except for that one thing, and it's bigger than everything. Anybody got in them things? He said, there was a murmuring that arose among the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. He said, then uh, the twelve called uh, the multitude of disciples unto them and said, it is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. He said, wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Oh, I love how God how took what was going on and gave them a direction and gave them a ministry and gave them an opportunity how to be in people's lives. The Bible lets us know there were some needs that arose among people. I want to tell you, we are living in a world full of needs this morning. Listen, we have people that have needs. 
There's people in this building this morning, you've got needs that you have told no one about. You've got needs that no one else can even meet. But it takes a supernatural power and presence of God. And I want to tell you what, He can meet your need. Amen? Oh, but in that, there are people, there are those that are here to help meet that need. God has His people all around our lives to help meet those needs. These Jews, the Grecians were Jews that spoke Greek. They were, they were those that kind of stood on the outside. And they kind of looked in to what was going on. And so they rose up against the Hebrews, what was going on around their life. Matter of fact, they were simply seeking to stir Strife. How many of you in your destiny, you understand, that there's things around you that Satan wants to put in your way to keep you from getting where you're supposed to be going? Amen? Keep you from that place of service. Keep you from walking where you need to go. Have that place of have that destiny. What we are supposed to be doing in our life and with our life. And can you understand how that there's a place of service for every single person you watch as they go. How they were how these Grecians. They were complainers. They were murmurs. How they were grumbling and they were how they were grumping. They were grudging. Wow, this is fun to preach on on Sunday morning, by the way. But it was like every single thing they did, nothing was ever right. Don't y'all like people like that? You ever been stuck in a vehicle with somebody like that? You ever been stuck on a church pew with somebody like that? Look at your neighbor right quick and say, is that you? They were like, every single thing, something was wrong with everything that was going on. And the only thing they could find wrong at this time, they said, well, we have some people over here. And that sister, Susie Q, did not, the preacher did not shake her hand when he come by. When you read this verse of Scripture in its context and you begin to bring it up, you understand all they were doing at this point I was trying to do some stabbing into the hearts of those who are serving a God and those who are being faithful and those who are listening to what God has said and giving of the Word of God. Oh, but I want to tell you what God did. God did a beautiful thing. So look at somebody and say, He does beautiful work. Amen? Oh, I want to tell you what God, how what Satan may have meant for evil, God how uses for good. And so God took all that that was going on around them and began to use it to help them to see that everybody has a place in this life. Everybody has a ministry. The Bible said there was division or there was neglect. They said, oh, you're neglecting the widows. You're neglecting those that are here. You're neglecting those that are here. And as you understand what the word neglect means to overlook, it means to disregard. He said, it's just like you're not taking care of those who are in need. A biblical definition of a widow is someone who has no family to take care of them, has no one that is related to them to be that support for them. And he says the church is supposed to step in to the fatherless, fatherless and the widows and be there to help them, be there to encourage them, be there to meet any need that they have. And he said, oh, we are missing out on those having that need. Oh, but the Bible lets us know these uh, th that these Grecians, they were also trying to cause a division. And as they caused the division, it would bring attention uh, that there was, yes, there are some needs that have to be met, that cannot be met unless there are people serving the Lord. Wow. Can I just let y'all in on something? Can I let y'all in on something? It takes everybody. We are not, we are not as a church, we are not as a people, there is not just one. It takes all, it takes everyone serving of the Lord where we should. There were needs that must be attentive, and they brought that to their, to, to their heart. And so in verse number 2, he said, look, oh, then the 12, he called them out, and he said, look, it's not reason that we leave the Word of God to serve the tables. They're not saying that they are not to be servants, because every single person is a servant. Servant. Amen. But it was this, that they could not take their attention away from what God had given them. That was the Word of God. While you watch and you understand something that I understood over these past few days, that when people came to church, 
I walked in, a church that had 12,000 people in it on a Friday night at 9 o'clock just for a prayer service. The building was completely full. Not one person was speaking. They came outside, they're talking. When they come inside to the church, they were, they were pray, they would bow their head and pray. They were praying that God would speak to their heart. I thought, Lord, what are we doing? They wanted to be focused on who God is. They wanted to hear who God is. They wanted to say, God, what do you have for me? And God, what can I say before you? And I'm looking at these scriptures and I'm already going through Acts chapter number 6. I'm thinking, God, what are we doing? Are we here to hear you? Or are we here like the Grecians? I want to see what's out of place or out of order. God, we need you in our life. We need that focus. And so the disciples said, Oh, we must focus on who? How that God said, how that little word serve tables. It means become uh, the providers of daily bread to care for them every single day. So he said, Look, I want you to know something. Everyone has a calling. Every person in this building this morning, you got a calling. You have a calling in your life. You have an appointment in your life. And so he said, in verse number 3, he said, let's look them out. He said, let's find those among you. That's what he said in verse number uh, verse number 3. Uh, Wherefore, brethren, look you out among you seven men of honest report. you got to remember, he is talking back uh, to those ones in verse number 1. He said, okay. He said, let's serve then. If there's a place of service, let's get it and go. I want to tell you, oh, what a blessing it is to know how those, their heart is to serve how God in Ephesians 4 and verse number 7 that says this, Unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Do you know something this morning? You have a gift. You have a gift. God has gifted you. You say, oh, my, nobody don't, don't care about my gift, or my gift may not be as important as someone else's gift. Oh, I want to tell you what, and when God gives you a gift, it is the most important. It is the greatest thing you have in your life. It is the greatest treasure you have in your life. It is the greatest thing you can ever do in your life is to serve God and understand how that appointment that God has for you. And so our responsibility, look right now and say at yourself and say, it's my responsibility. Y'all didn't look at yourself. It's me. Here's my responsibility. It's found in verse number 3. My responsibility is this. He said, look you out among you, a men of honest report. Is it we're not serving because we don't have an honest report? That we're being faithful to God? That we're doing things that we shouldn't do. That we're seeing things that we shouldn't see. That we're going places that we shouldn't go. That we have stains in our life that we should not have. Because it's allowing things in us and on us and attitudes on us and in us. He said, no, I want you to look you out, man, of honest report. And then he says, in verse number, verse number three again, he said, and full of the Holy Ghost. Wow. When I look at these, that He begins to lead us. That word full, it means to cover over, to fulfill. It means to be accomplished. It means to be filled up with the Holy Ghost. The Bible says it like this. I love John 3 and verse number 30. He said, He must do what, church? Increase. And I must do what? It means I have got to get out of the way so God can fill me, so God can be seen in my life, so God can be everything in my life. He said, oh, we need some servants that will pour themselves out so that God can fill them up, becoming empty of self, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. How long has it been since we had that desire to be full of God? More than anything else in life. That God would fill us. That God would anoint us. We get way too comfortable Sometimes, like, as long as I go to church, I can check it off my list. It's kind of like a kid with a toothbrush. They just want to—they don't—they really don't want their teeth clean. Y'all know that, right? They just want to be able to say when Mama says, "Did you brush your teeth?" Like, check that off. Y'all know what I mean? Some of you adults are the same way. We 
just want, we got that checklist in our life. We, we just want to make sure that we have done these specific things in our life. Yep, as long as I've got that done. I went to church. I read my Bible a little bit. I, yeah, I did say my prayer before I eat this bologna sandwich. I mean, those little things in life that we check off and say, yep, I'm okay. Rather than saying, God, I want you more than I want to breathe in my life. Oh, God, I want you more than I want to eat food. I want you more than I want to speak to anybody. God, I've got to have you. Oh, and you watch that place. They begin to repair their heart. They are already prepared to serve by that honest report, that place of knowing Christ as Savior and Lord of your life. If you do not know Him, friend, I want to tell you, you don't have an honest report. As a matter of fact, your, your record is dirty and stained with sin and ungodliness. And the Bible says because we are sinner, we will die lost and we'll go to an awful place called hell. Oh, but I want to tell you, you have an honest report this morning. And say, glory to God, yes, my record is clean. Because my Savior has washed away every sin. He's forgiven me. How many of you have been forgiven? Amen. That He has washed away every sin out of my life. That honest report. And then He said to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And then He said, and wisdom. Wow. How many feel like in your life, you don't have to raise your hand, but you feel like in your life, it's like you don't have wisdom. You make wrong choices, wrong decisions, and it's like, why did I do that? That place of wisdom. And you know what that word wisdom is? He's talking about the Word. He's talking about, he said, look, get those that are following the Word of God, that are following the world, the most wise that has ever walked on this earth, Jesus Himself, are following the wisdom of God out through life. He said, look, find those who have that honor support, who are being clean. Find those who are full of the Holy Ghost. Find those who are following and walking and living in the Word of God. Living like Jesus. Oh, wow, you watch as you see and you understand he begins to unfold. He said, then appoint them. Out there in that verse of Scripture, he said, whom we may appoint over this business. Wow. He didn't say, I just need a random volunteer. He said, I need somebody that's got a heart to serve. Well, I'll tell you this morning, Jesus is looking for somebody with a heart to serve. I don't want to be on the shelf. I don't want to be on the sideline. I just want to be clean and serve him. No, he said, I, I'm going to be real honest with you. I don't care how God uses me. If it's in a prayer closet, if it's under a stage to pray, if it's in a back corner somewhere, I just want to serve him. He said, oh, we got to have something that we can appoint. You have an appointed place. You have an appointed time. you got an appointment in your life to serve. Look what he says in verse number 4. I love in verse number 4. He said, because we have got to stay steadfast. In verse number 4, he said it like this. He said, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. There's an underlying theme that continues to go through the book of Acts. And every act of God that happens is happening because this act is taking place in the lives of these disciples. We must give ourselves to prayer and to the Word of God. Whew. He said, my house shall be called what? The house of prayer. I've got to give myself to prayer. Oh, when you look at being steadfast, there's some things you, we need to understand. We've got to give ourselves. You ever, you ever been to a wedding before? How many of you have been to a wedding before? All right. Praise the Lord. How many of you have been married before? Would you raise your hand? Amen. Hey, you know what you're doing? When that husband and wife, when that groom and bride come together, they are giving themselves to each other. You become one. I love how the wording is and how God lets us see and paints this picture in verse number 4 where He said we are to give ourselves. We're to come before God and we're to give ourselves. That means there is a sacrifice. There is a laying down for me to be steadfast. As Christians, it is so easy to be up one minute and down one minute. Y'all know what I mean? I mean, one minute is, hallelujah, God can move mountains. The next minute, it is, I'm buried under this mountain and I'll never get out. How many of you know what I'm talking about? It's just like, wow, everything is great, everything is good, God can save people, God can work in our life, and the next minute it's like, man, I don't even know where God is. Where's the steadfastness? 
Where's that walking in the Word and walking in faith and knowing that, God, You are real whether I'm on the mountain or I'm in the valley. God, no matter where I am or what's going on, God, You're still real. you still got all power. Oh, that is where these disciples are. They're in that place of steadfastness. They're in that place of yielding themselves, of giving themselves to God. You know what we want? How many of you know what we want? We want a Christian life in a microwave. How many of you remember when microwave popcorn first came out? Raise your hand. All right. Some of y'all, how many of you know what a microwave is? Raise your hand. Amen. All right. How many of you ever eaten microwave popcorn before? Praise the Lord. I thought it was the greatest thing ever. Then you stick that little flat bag in there that says this side down. And you flip on. Now they have the button that just says popcorn. You see, we would burn. Did, does microwave popcorn not smell good when it's burnt? Amen. That's a, that's a seven week smell right there. I mean, we used, I thought it was a great, you stick it in there, and here it comes. You open the bag, man, one minute, you're eating some popcorn. I thought that was great and still I, until I started missing Jiffy Pop. I remember Jiffy Pop. I, it's a whole lot more exciting to see that thing on the stove top. While it's warming up. And you see that big old tin full, and you you know what y'all waiting on, don't you? That thing. To, how many of you like some Jiffy Pop? Amen. You know what's happening in America? You know what's happening in our lives? We've became that way with Christianity. We're going to get saved. We're going to serve God. But if it don't happen by tomorrow, and everybody in my family ain't saved by tomorrow, and I'm not feeling better by tomorrow, I'm done. Here's what he says. He said they gave themselves. That is all the time. That is continually a sacrifice. He says it like this in Romans 12.1. He said, do you become a living sacrifice? It is every day me saying, God, I'm going to lay down my life. I'm going to lay down my wants and my desires. And God, whatever you want, that's what I want. And God, I want to walk with you. I want to serve you because I know you can fill my life and you can anoint my life. And God, you can give me a destiny that is far beyond any dream I can ever have. Because you said in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 20, you are able to do exceeding abundantly above anything I could even ask or think. God wants to do great things. There's got to be that giving of ourselves. It's me giving my life. He's walking in His presence. He is God here. I am. I think about this steadfastness. I think about this past week when I learned of two missionaries who came in the late 1800s to South Korea. Rather, Korea at the time. They came over and what they had done before they got there was they had translated most of the Old Testament before they ever stepped foot into Korea. They had translated for the first time the Bible, the Old Testament. So when they got there, these two missionaries, who was, one was a Methodist, one was a Presbyterian, came together and they said, we're going to, we're going to go over and reach these Korean people. And they brought the Word of God. And so as they did, they went out and they began to give out Bibles. And they began to talk to the Korean people about what the Bible was about and what it was. And for the first time, they are reading the Bible in their language and they are hearing about this God that loves them. And that steadfastness, and that continuing of giving, and that continuing of discipling, one of those missionaries never preached a message. He never stood before the crowd to preach. He died before that ever that opportunity ever happened. Do you know what he had done? He had given himself. He had given himself to the Word, to translate the Word. He had given Himself to those people to say, hey, you need to know this God. He had given Himself in such a way in prayer that there was a transformation that took place in the people. And I want to tell you, as you look at what is happening in verse number 4, they understood the greatest thing that we have is not the ministries that we do, but it's the One who that we are worshiping, the One we are giving ourselves to that can make everything take place and happen. All you watch, so being steadfast, we are not settled. 
We're not in this place just to do whatever we want to do. We are giving ourselves to God. You say, how do I do that, preacher? It's one day at a time. It's one battle at a time. It's when you are faced with those struggles that you say, God, I have nothing left, but I give what I have to you. I want to give myself to prayer. I want to give myself to the Word of God. You say, I don't even know how to pray. Friend, I want to tell you, all you do is just talk to Him. He's waiting on you. He is longing to hear you. And He is waiting for that transformation, that relationship that you've got to have with Him. All that place in your life. The Bible lets us know in verse number 5 and 6, there was that place that they gave themselves being selected. It's amazing that these that are selected are the, are the Grecians, as just as he said in verse number 3. He looked at him and said, Hey, go find you some of you. Some people that will serve. Some people that will be faithful. Some people that you watch. God working in their life. I select them out. And He did. He found that seven of them that, that to point just to this ministry. The first one was by the name of Stephen. His name means a crown. You watch the rest of them. One's name means to be fond of horses. One's that name you watch. His name means victorious. The other one means before the dance. Now this day before you will ever have been in that place of walking and serving and praising God. It, it's it's got to happen before that ever takes place. It's that place of giving our heart, our life. You watch as one's name means a victory over the people. Another one means value. The Bible said these men were full of the Holy Ghost. They are filled with His presence, His power. The Bible said then they prayed and laid hands on them. They sent them out to serve. I love verse number 5 and 6 because there's something happening in every one of these men. And it's found in Galatians 5 and verse number 22 and 23 where the Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is joy, love, peace. And he goes on in the fruit of the Spirit as he does. This is what is present in these men's lives. Can I ask you a question today? Are you trying to reach your destiny without the power of the Holy Spirit? Are you trying to walk through life without getting what you need from God and letting God be yours and you be His? There's that place and that selected of being chosen of understanding that God has chosen you. I do not know what kind of gift you have. Can everybody hear me? Some of you are looking down. I must have went too long. I went too long. It's twelve. It's seven minutes after twelve. In case somebody is waiting on you, if you got a candy bar, if somebody's got a candy bar beside of you, hand it to them. Make sure they get some to eat. They're gonna die right here in the sanctuary. Hold on one second. We're going to be done. Can I just tell you something? You're chosen. God selected you. God has let us breathe. And He said, I want you to know I love you so much. Oh, I'd give my Son for you that you can be saved. I have chosen you to serve. I've chosen you with a gift. Somebody's got a gift to sing. You're to sing like a canary. Let her rip like a tater chip. Amen? Amen? Never, ever quit. Satan will try to steal it from you. So he's got the gift of mercy. Listen, will you try to help? Don't ever be discouraged in your gift of mercy in helping somebody. Listen, let God use your gift to glorify Him, to magnify Him. Oh, that He may be glorified. That gift, I don't know what your gift is, but I do know this. God has given you one. Qualified in the Holy Spirit by being saved and knowing Jesus. He said, here's what they need. He said, God, have faith and full of the Holy Ghost. You say, I don't have much faith. Can I just let you in on a little secret? God said in the book of Matthew, the only faith you need is the size of a grain of mustard seed. He said, all it takes is you trusting me one thing at a time. He said they were full of faith. They believed God. They were full of the Holy Spirit. They had prepared their hearts. And the Bible lets us know in verse number 7, it was real simple. Because what happened whenever they got things where they need to be in the order they needed to be in, people serving where they should serve, that it, the Word of God increased. People began to hear the Word. Walls were torn down. Maybe that person that you're concerned about is not where they need to be because we're not where we need to be. They had to tear down some walls in their life. The Word of God increased, the Bible said. 
And then he said, by the way, he said he held his word above his name. I want to tell you, the Word of God is the most precious treasure in this world. The Word of God. It increased. And the Bible said, if there's also that place they were intentional in what they did in verse number 7, he said, because the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. They purposely taught other people. You know, we don't have a whole lot that God says, here's your do and don't list in the Word. Because He gives us the Holy Spirit to lead us. And it will go along with the Word. But He always says this, where to go and make disciples. we got to be teaching somebody something. Can I let you know something? Everybody in here, you're teaching somebody something. You're teaching them how good God is, or you're teaching them a life that is away from God. We're leading them somewhere. Lead them to Jesus. He said it multiplied. The, uh, that it multiplied greatly. That means that it was in abundance they couldn't even count anymore. They couldn't even keep up with it anymore, how many people come to know Jesus. I witnessed that this past week by a little thing called a foreign broadcast system. They, they, they Every single day, 1.5 billion people listen every day. I'm not talking about Christians going down the road just listening to Christian radio. I'm talking about in communist countries. Countries where just a few weeks ago, there were, there were 120 people gathered around one radio to try to hear a broadcast. They were caught, 40 of them. I didn't see this on CNN, Fox News, anywhere else. 40 of them they executed on the spot with the rest of them watching gone. The others, the other 80, were taken to prison immediately for listening to a radio. You know what they're doing though? They're multiplying. They're intentionally listening to the gospel so they can tell somebody else. It's intentional. Friend, I want to tell you, it's real simple. And God says in verse number 7, He said, what was impossible started happening. He said, the high priest those that were those that, that crucified Jesus, those that were saying you need to be put in prison. Now the Bible said they're trusting Jesus. Can I just let you know something? With God, nothing is impossible. And those people around our life that we think are absolutely impossible, nothing is impossible with God. But I'll tell you, we've got to understand our destiny. Because we are to lead we are leading them somewhere. Friend, I want to tell you, what kind of transformation you need this morning? What will, tra- what will cause us as believers to get desperate in our life? Something I noticed, and, and it was the way they did things. When it comes to this time in a service, this is the time when most of the time we pick up our... We're putting stuff in the pocketbook, putting our coat on, getting our pocketbook because... We know we got, we're going to eat. We got other stuff. Y'all know what I mean? We start preparing to leave. The invitation was the time that they prepared to come. I was like, wow. They all prayed at the same time, prayed out loud at the same time. But even more, they were all desperate at the same time. Maybe we need to be encapsulated around our lives with nuclear bombs and with our freedom being threatened. To give us a new desperation that if we don't have God, we're going to be overtaken. I was like, what would it take for us as Christians to get desperate enough in our life to know that I have nothing to lean on but God? And if He don't intervene, I have nothing. I have no hope. These believers in the book of Acts were in that place. They knew if God didn't do it, it wasn't going to get done. Oh, Peter and them, they're behind the bars. They didn't have any, they didn't have, they did not have a monopoly get out of jail card free. They didn't have any way out. God just unlocked the doors from the inside. Can I let you know something? God is able, amen? How long is it going to be before we say, God, I need you to transform me? Because if I'm not changed, there's nobody around me going to be changed. God, if I'm not changed, there's no hope for my grandchildren. There's no hope for my children. There's no hope for my co-workers. God, it's me. 
I'm the only light they're ever going to see. God, I want you to do something in me. Let's stand together this morning. Let's pray together. If they come, get a new hymn of invitation. I'm going to ask Brother Todd just to sing softly whatever God's put on his heart. This morning, I want to ask you personally, right now, personally in your life, what are you desperate for? What is that thing in your life that you need more than anything else in life? What is that destiny that you have? What do you need God to do in your life? They thought, wow, here's a, here's a way we can like say these few things. Man, these Hebrews, it'll kind of throw them off guard. Maybe they're... But you know what God did with that? God showed them a whole ministry and said, yes, everybody can serve. Yes, everybody has a part. Yes, everybody. There's something everybody can do. Somebody can do something. Listen, while God is speaking to you and you are coming this morning, while He's just dealing with your heart, listen, I don't know what you might need to surrender to. I don't know what you might need to give yourself to. But I do know this. We serve a God this morning who does the impossible. You may have a friend, a family member, somebody in your life that is impossible. Can I tell you what? God deals with the impossible. My God is a God of the impossible. Listen, He knows what you need this morning. Would you come and say, God, here I am. Lord, I want to give it to you. God, I know it's impossible, but God, you're possible. Maybe there's somebody you need to serve. Maybe there's somebody around your life that needs some help from God. Friend, I want to tell you, Jesus is still the answer. It's 2018. Listen, we're headed toward uh, our lives as we watch the Bible unfold. Listen, we're going to be at home one day. And I'll tell you right now, he's still alive and well. And friend, he knows exactly what you need. You say this morning, preacher, I need God to speak to me. I need something in my life. I need help from the Lord. So I'm too embarrassed to come on this altar. Listen, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I just come and say, God, I don't know how else. I don't even know what to say. But, Lord, I just want to come in faith. And I want to believe you, God, for what's going on in my life right now. Lord, I just want to trust you. I want to surrender to what you have for me, God. I give it to, I give it to you right now. Listen, would you come? Father, in the name of Jesus, you know how you are speaking to all of our lives this morning. God, you know what you are saying to us and what we need to be doing. And, Lord, I just ask you right now, God, that you, Lord, would open our hearts, open our eyes to the gospel. Lord, open our hearts to your word this morning, God, right where we are. Father, help us to respond to you as you are speaking to us. Lord, help us to realize, God, you are giving us an opportunity like no other. You've given us, Lord, the opportunity to serve, an opportunity, God, to be a witness, an opportunity, Father, to let our light shine. God, we want to let it shine for your glory. Hallelujah. Jesus, you are so wonderful. Thank you, God, for what you want to do through all of our lives and somebody else's life. Lord, use us for your glory. Right now, while all these are playing around this altar, you say, Preacher, this morning, listen, if I die today, I don't have that clean record. I don't have that place of an honest report. I'm really not sure. I know Jesus is my Savior. And if I die today, friend, I, you, you'd be in hell. I want to tell you something. Glory to God. Jesus loves you. He died for you. He wants to save you and forgive you of all of your sins. He said, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Listen, this morning, that song, I Surrender All. Brother Todd's going to sing it right here one more time. He's going to sing another verse. While he's singing this morning, you say, Preacher, I need to come. I need peace in my heart. I need God to save me, forgive me. I need God to work in my life, restore my life. Listen, would you come while these are, while he's singing? Listen, while he's around this altar praying, you say, I, I need Jesus. Maybe this morning you say, you know something, I've walked away from God. I need him to restore my life. Forgive me. Forgive me my sins. I need God to restore me this morning. Can I tell you what? God wants to restore your life. You say this morning, preacher, I just need God to restore me and forgive me in my life. Listen, he's able. Hallelujah. You say, I know I'm saved, but I have walked away from God. I've walked away from God. Would you just be honest with God and slip your hand up? I know this morning, I know I, do, I know I know Jesus. I know that if I died right now, I'll be in heaven. But I have walked away from the Lord. I'm not where I need to be with God. Pray for you. Would you just slip your hand up this morning? Would you just slip your hand up? God bless your hearts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for hearing from God this morning, friend. I want to tell you, listen, God bids us to come to get to that place. God, I want you to give me an honest report. God, cleanse my heart. Fill me with the Holy Spirit, God, so I can live for you. God, I want to be effective. 
I now this morning and say, you know something, I want to know where God wants me to serve. I want to know what God wants me to do in my life. I want my destiny fulfilled in who Jesus is. I, I want to know what God wants for my life. Would you just slip your hand up this morning? I, I, want, I want to know. I want to walk with Him. I want what God wants for me. Hallelujah. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. You say this morning, Pastor, if I die today, I'm really not sure I know Jesus. I'm not sure I'm saved. Pray for me. Would you just slip your hand up this morning? Just be honest with God. Honest with yourself. Listen. Hey, I need God in my life. Hallelujah. Friend, He knows. This morning you may, as you're here, listen, right where you are, you can ask Him, Lord, God, I'm a sinner. Jesus, I believe you died for me on the cross. And on the third day, you, you was buried. And on the third day, you arose. And Jesus, I give myself to you. I ask you to forgive my sin. Come in my life, Jesus. Lord, thank you that you made it so possible. You said, for whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. God, thank you for making it possible today for me to be saved. Hallelujah. You said this morning, Pastor, in my life today, wow, I need Jesus. Friend, if you trusted Him this morning, here's what you need to do. It's time just to live for Him. Listen, we'll take God's Word, show you how God said just to live for Him every day. It's simple obedience. Just like I said, it's simple. Live for God. Live for Him. Let Him be God through our life. Let's pray together. Father, we love You. Thank You, Lord, for being so good to us. Thank You for the opportunity You've given us this morning to worship, to honor, to praise Your name, God. Lord, I thank You for the Word this morning that reminds us that all of us, no matter where we have been, no matter what we have done, God, no matter what is going on around our life, no matter in our life, God, how sinful we've been, no matter how much doubt we've had or fear we've had, God, I'm glad that you have faith. How, Lord, you have the opportunity to cleanse us and to wash us and make us clean so that we can be faithful to you and allow you, God, to work in and through us. Lord, allow you, God, how, Lord, to be our Savior, our Lord, our King, and to do great things in and through our lives. Father, every person in this building, every person that's watching live right now, God, you have, a, you have an opportunity for all of us. We are appointed, God, in serving you. Lord, help us to step into that appointment and live for you and lift you up. Lord Jesus, you are so good. God, I want to praise you for your goodness. I want to, I want to honor you, God, for your grace. Lord, I pray for every person in this building, those this morning that need you as Savior and Lord. God, may this be the day, the hour, God, if they continue to serve you. Lord, help us to be faithful to you in everything we do, to be a disciple that will glorify your name. We give you praise. Lord, we give you honor and glory for all your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you know today that God has something for you? Would you say amen? I watched on Thursday night, I watched one of our young ladies... I watched God put her and give her the opportunity in her appointed time to speak to her student body and everybody that was there on Thursday night about her life story and what God can do. Can I tell you something? You have, we have opportunities around us every single day. Let's share that story with somebody. Amen? That Jesus is alive and well. I want to ask before we, uh, before we go, uh, I want to ask how many in here today you are, you are a volunteer, a worker in Bible school? I want you to raise your hand right quick. You're volunteering in Bible school. I want everybody to look around right quick. These people will not look the same next Sunday. Amen. Uh, we're gonna go, we're gonna, we're gonna close in a word of prayer, uh, this morning, uh, and pray for Vacation Bible School, pray for every worker, uh, pray for every child that'll come. I ask the welcome committee, you go ahead and make your way, if you will, uh, to the door, uh, and I'm gonna ask Brother Bill Barlow if you'll come and pray for Bible School and pray, uh, for every worker tonight that God will bless. I need you to do me a favor. I need you to get on there, share it on Facebook, uh, go tell it, call people, tell them, hey, it's time to come to Bible School. Uh, we need them here. Because they need Jesus. Amen. And uh, we want to share the love of God with them. Uh, anybody you see, tell them about Bible school. Tell them there's a Savior, praise God, that wants to do a work in their life. Amen. Turn around and shake somebody's hand after we pray. After we pray and let people know you love them in the Lord. Also, last Sunday, uh, we had a, uh, we had an envelope, uh, that, uh, was sitting in a seat, uh, with a bottle of water. And I don't know if it got cleaned up after church, but if you happen to get that and, uh, it had a gift card in it, please let us know. Uh, we'd like to return that. Uh, and it's one of those things that could have just been picked up and, and, and done away with. Uh, somebody just cleaned it up. So, uh, uh but if you have found that, please let us know so we can return that. I want to tell all of you something. I love you. Glory to God. It's good to be back home. Amen. It's good to know the Lord. And uh, I'm glad this morning we serve a risen Savior. And praise God for His goodness. Now, next Sunday, we need you to bring somebody with you.
If what, so you say, preacher, what, you, what are we going to do with them? We're going to sit them on your lap. So bring somebody you can hold. Amen? Now, I want you to bring somebody with you. Let's invite people to come. Trust God for great things. We're, we're expecting God to do great things in our life. Amen? We serve a risen Savior, and we give Him praise. Let's pray together. Amen. Amen, brother. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank You for the day. We thank You for the message, Lord. We thank You for the transformation that comes about in our lives, Lord, when we uh, accept You as our Lord and Savior. We come to you again, Lord, needing you. And, Lord, we ask that you touch this uh, vacation Bible school, Lord. I pray, God, for every person working, every person that will be here, every person praying, everything associated with it, Lord. I pray it be in your perfect will, Lord. Help us to do it, Lord, because we love you, not from obligation, but because we love you. We want to share that word, Lord. We pray for those seeds that may be sown in, the, in a young child's heart, Lord. I pray that you touch them, help them. Pray for that adult that may come, Lord, that doesn't know you or has drifted away. I pray, God, you'd touch and help them. Most of all, God, we pray that everything that's done, Lord, will point to your Savior, Jesus Christ, and his love for us, Lord. Of course, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.